Hello guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are sticking these little sound exciters to the back of my pedals here. These are Fanatec CSL pedals, and uh, they are kind of well suited for this as they do have a nice, easy, flat surface I can stick these to. Um, so yeah, and the idea is we're gonna run it through SimHub, get some nice tactile effects from the racing games, and we're gonna feel it directly on our feet through the pedals. Absolutely perfect, I think this will be. Um, there is a video I put out several months ago where I introduced the idea of using the sound exciters for this very purpose. And um, I kind of put it to the side for, for a while as um, one of the problems was with these exciters, because they worked just fine, they're very powerful really for what they are, is um, the, um, the wires that come out of them, which is up to that point there, that's the wire that comes out of it. I've soldered some additional wire to it. These are very thin, very thin, very flimsy. I wasn't too sure how, you know, they're gonna be very durable and I felt, you know, I figured it might sort of fall to pieces because of those wires. Because we're hanging off there and the pedal's gonna be moving around a lot. So yeah, it did concern me. So um, I suddenly came up with a basic brainwave, something practical, and all I've done is covered this in hot glue. So that's the basically the thin wire here. Uh, on up to this point and um, I've hot glued it right onto the exciter so everything is now you know really secure very sturdy and those are uh, those are uh, flimsy wires are no longer flimsy since they are fully supported if you want to do a better better job you could use something like Sugru which is a, um, um, a, a putty which turns into like silicon it cures over 24 hours and you just mold it into place it's very tidy obviously hot glue is a little bit of slapdash but it's cheap stuff and it works you know, we've got flexible cable and it's uh, nice and strong. So that's the reason I did that. You know, I'm sure you could find a better way of doing it, but um, you know, that's how I did it. And it's gonna do the job for what we have planned here. So if you're not sure about bass shakers and all that sort of stuff, do check the links in the description since I have covered um, shakers in several projects indeed and um, DIY projects. So this is my latest one. And um, there's related links, lots of useful information about how to use these in, in different ways, to be honest, on, on your sim rig. And uh, also there's a beginner's guide. So if this all looks kind of complicated, it really isn't. You know, it's just a quick overview just before we move on. You know, these sound exciters are effectively speakers. They connect to an amp, so standard audio amp. Uh, this amp also has a built-in sound card, it's a USB sound card. So that goes straight to my PC. Um, ordinarily, if you had a standard little amp, uh, you'd, might, you'd need to plug that amp into a sound card on your PC. This SimCat, she's still here. Hello no SimCat, take it easy. And, um, uh, but for this purpose, because the sound card is directly on here, plug that into your PC and it will appear as a sound output on your PC. So very easy, very simple. Um, I'll show you how that works in a moment, where I'll show you for a software guide through SimHub. Um, and also what we're gonna be doing is because we have two channels, in SimHub we can address those two channels separately. So as these are gonna go on my separate pedal, so this one I'm going to put on the brake pedal, like so, and that one's gonna go on the accelerator. Um, I can basically pipe through different effects through the two different channels. So yeah, they're gonna be separate effects and they're gonna be completely independent. Okay guys, so let's get on with this. I'll stick, them, stick these on and uh, we'll get into SimHub, get them mounted to the SimRig and uh, we'll get, uh, get moving on this. Hello SimCat, are you all right? All right, good girl.
Okay, at this point, you'll want your amp plugged into your PC and obviously those bass shakers plugged into the amp. Next, you can then load up SimHub. Um, first thing I will mention is I have a licensed edition of SimHub, so I've paid for that. Um, you can download SimHub for free and a lot of options are available. A lot of functionality is still there if you don't pay for a license. But if there's anything I show you uh, coming up, which isn't in your version of SimHub, if you haven't paid for a license, do understand that would be the difference, in which case just buy a license is cheap and it's a really good piece of software. So I would recommend that. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go to the Shake It Bass Shakers section. So that's there. Let's click on that. And here you can see all the sound outputs. Those are basically all the sound card outputs um, on the computer. So you need to identify what your uh, sound card, your amp is connected to. I already know this for mine. Um, I plugged it in and it's this one. It is the speaker's uh, USB 2 device. So I know because my um, amp has a built-in sound card, I've already checked this, it's that. So I can uh, do a couple of things. I can activate it here, or you can uh, just open it up and enable outputs there. When you turn on the sound card, SimHub will automatically go to corners and it will show you this. And um, this is basically means it's assuming you have a four channel amplifier, which is not the case for us, of course. It's a two channel amplifier. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you had a four channel amplifier, you could put a bass shaker on each of those channels and you'd have those shakers on four corners of your sim rig and they would all independently um, you know, have effects on them. So we know we don't have that. So what I'm gonna do is make it a little bit easier for us. We know we have two channels and it is left and right. So let's go to that. And now what you can do, you, if you click the test now, uh, the, the shakers will individually vibrate. Um, I don't think it, this is picked up on my uh, microphone here, but if you just tap touch them, um, you can feel it. So I know that is the break. I can feel it vibrating and that is the accelerator. So, uh, yep, it's coming through. We have effects. That's a good start. So um, that's all good. But uh, what we want to do now is tune those effects so we can pick what we want coming through um, the actual shakers. So to do that, we need to create a custom map. So that's under here. Okay, so there's a lot going on here and it may look quite confusing. So what we need to do is kind of clean up this menu because basically it's turned on all the effects. And uh, what you can do is basically turn them off. Um, so we know we only have two channels. So it's that, that channel and that channel, one and two. We don't have three and four. So what you might want to do um, is what I like to do at least is uh, clean things up and just turn all these off. Although it doesn't really matter because these effects are not going anywhere. Um, I just uh, like to clean it up so I just have a better visual on uh on this grid here um also actually what you can do is to make it a little bit easier if you click on that it opens it up and you have a a bigger version so uh, let me go ahead and clean this all up okay so right now uh, we have the left and right channels so let me just remember which is which so uh okay channel one is my break channel two is the accelerator i do need to remember that um, and of course you can see all these effects are still turned on so it's up to you what effects you want to run on your um, shakers here but i have a particular requirement which i want to run uh, the effects on um the other thing to bear in mind is if you have too many of these effects running what happens they do sort of like all kind of combine together and just become a vibrational mess and you can't really work out you know one from another so you will want to really sort of tone them down to just like maybe two or three. So it's up to you what you want to do. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna turn everything off so I can you know, just have a good look at all the options. Um, so my what I wanna do here um, is I want to add wheel slip to the accelerator pedal and uh, brake locking and, AB and ABS to the brake pedal. That's all I want. I don't want to add loads of extra effects. Um, the idea, I'll talk about this later when I get on track of you know the purpose of why I'm doing this, but it's so I can have um, an effect coming through the pedal, which is affected by that input. So if I lock up the brakes, I'm gonna feel brake lock. And if I, uh, if I over accelerate, I you know, put the power down too early, and the, and the actual uh, wheel slip and start skidding around, I'm gonna feel it through the accelerator. That's what I want. Of course, you can do what you like, but that's what I uh, have a plan. That's what I wanna do here. Uh, so what I need to do is uh, just remember which is which, because I keep forgetting. Um, I think that's the break, isn't it? Let's do a test. 
that's it's the break. So what I want to do is find down the list here. Um, here we go. Da, da, da. Uh, wheel lock. So we want. I'm going to put it on all of them. So effectively, when any of the uh, wheels lock, then that effect is going to come through. And for that one, I want wheel slip. So that's kind of easy. Um, I think it's ABS here. Let's see if there's ABS. It's traction control. Well, actually, it might be an interesting one to put on there. You could do that. But um, yeah, I think I'm happy with that, at least for now. I mean, I can revisit this uh, ABS, actually, ABS Active. That's the one I wanted. So I'm going to put that on that channel on the brake pedal. Again, when I'm kind of pushing into the pedal and I can feel the ABS activating, I know I'm just braking too hard. So that should work for me now, and I should be quite I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to close that up. And those are my settings. Um, if we go back to the effects profile, there's some stuff here which you can also um, change some of the, basically changing the um, some of the effects that's coming through. So let me just find it, guys. Let me just find the uh, one I'm talking about because I, I do need to turn it on here as well. So let's go to ABS. And as you can see, I can actually change the, basically the volume of the effect there. You know, so you can change in, you know, affect the intensity of the effect. I'm just going to leave it at 100. I'm happy with that for the moment. Um, these are the things you need to kind of just you know, play around with and work out for yourself what you like. And what do we want? What was the other one? So we had probably down here. So we want that one on and that one on. Uh, you can see these are set at 50%. I'm just going to whack them up to 100. I can always adjust this later. But the other thing you can do is um, if we open these up, you can see there's more um, options here. So you can do some things here. You can effectively change the frequency of the effects coming through. As you can see, it is set at 50 hertz. And um, I'm just gonna leave it on default here. And it's something you just need to basically get on track, do some tests and see if it feels okay to you. And if it doesn't, then you can just basically adjust this, play around with the hertz here. Um, I'm not gonna mess around with this, but I just wanna show you that there's a lot of stuff going on here. And uh, you can do some sort of different sort of bits and pieces here. So the other thing I can do at this point as well, if um, if you look at the picture again in the bottom right, um, I'm doing test and it's just uh, making the uh, shakers go a little bit wild. So that's good. It's working. And uh, let's just try the wheel lock. That's not strong. Um, I can feel it. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's coming through quite nicely, although it doesn't seem, uh, at least from my point of view, the uh, the larger one, which is the actual brake one, um, is uh, seemingly seems to be less uh, aggressive than the the smaller shaker here. But that's okay. We can uh, we can work with that. Okay, so that's it. That's it. That's all set up. And all we need to do now is go into the game and run it, and um, this will work. So let's do that now. But um, what I wanted to show you before I leave this section is go back to the game section. Okay, so if you have paid for a license for SimHub, SimHub will automatically recognize which game is running, and you just, you know, you just get on with it. If you haven't paid for a license of SimHub, what you need to do is basically select the game. So you click on the game and it will be the active game and then launch that game, it will work for you. So just remember that um, you need to manually do this if you haven't paid for a license for SimHub. Okay, uh, let's get this all set up and uh, away we go. Firstly, I can tell you it's working, and it's working well. Right off the line, lighting up the tyres, a large dose of wheel slip vibration is coming through the gas pedal. By isolating the effects to each pedal, there's no doubt when the rumble comes through, whether I've locked the wheels or experiencing wheel slip traction loss. These effects go beyond immersion, they act as useful indicators. They highlight your errors and you can use that to your advantage. I'm usually pretty good on the brakes, so I wasn't getting much in the way of lockups, but um, I'm also very familiar with this track, so possibly more to do with that. But I can tell you it's a clear and apparent effect through the vibrations felt through the pedal when it does occur. The wheel slip effect was a real eye opener that I wasn't anticipating. It's a complete traction loss effect. So it's not just skidding the tires off the line, but also when you think your tires are completely planted, 
You may still be overdriving the tyre grip and the vibration effect communicates this. So whether you're braking, cornering or accelerating away, the rumble begins to warn you subtly as you reach the limit of traction. The greater the wheel slip, the greater the rumble effect. You can feel the traction of the tyres through the pedal effectively. As you can imagine, that's highly useful, something you can take advantage of. This did certainly help me tame my aggressive driving in this open wheeler, particularly as I was completely unfamiliar with this race car. It's just a random pick I thought might work well for the tests. I really leaned on the rumble effect to help me get to grips with the grip, so to speak. The wheel slip and wheel lock effect vibrations have a different texture. The wheel lock vibrations are more violent and instant and strong rumble, where as I just mentioned a moment ago, wheel slip has an analog range, building up strength relative to the loss of traction. So these cheap little sound exciters are capable as mini bass shakers, at least in this type of arrangement, being that they are planted behind the pedal and your feet are sitting directly in the firing line. The rumble is not overpowering, but it is just about right, plenty strong enough for this job. Something I didn't mention earlier is I am using a 20 watt and 25 watt exciter. I bought both of them just to see um, how they performed together because one is obviously a bit more powerful than the other and one is slightly larger than the other. Um, the 25 watt unit doesn't cost that much more than the 20 watt unit so you may as well go for the more powerful ones even though that smaller 20 watt exciter still did a fine job so I can't really complain either one would be perfectly suitable. Well then, I would count this as a successful DIY mod experiment. It's kind of cheap and it's kind of easy to bodge together. No special tools or skills needed here. Occasionally when I get an idea like this in my head and if it doesn't cost much money and it's simple to put together, it could well end up in a video like this just to test the proof of concept. And it's something that's good to share, something to put out there to give you some ideas, something you can try for yourself indeed and improve upon. My mod could be tidier, no doubt, but the purpose of this build is to test out the idea. Call it a beta version. So why not give it a go yourself and let me know how you got on. Okay guys, we'll end this one on that note. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video. And uh, yeah, if you're new to my channel, thanks for dropping by. I hope you uh, liked this content and you know, do consider subscribing and coming back soon. As indeed, I'll be back soon myself with something new. So until next time, happy simming and bye bye.